So for our first one, we want to solve the triangle ABC without a picture, where we have that A is 70 degrees, small a, the side length is 15, and small b, the side length is 30. So to understand what's going on here, well, we have two side lengths. We can't get the third one until we have all of the angles. So if we've got small a and big A as well as small b, we can get small, we can get big B, excuse me, or at least we can get sine of big B. That is from a rearrangement of the law of cosine, law of, law of sines, ah, getting ahead of myself, we will have that sine of b is equal to b times sine of a over a. That is, we have something like this. We're going to multiply over the sine of b, multiply over the sine of a, and divide over the a. That is, we'll cross multiply and divide, as it were. Just rearrange to get sine of b by itself. In this case, that means we're going to end up with 30 times sine of 70 degrees divided by 15, or this is all unitless measurements other than those degrees there, but that is approximately 1.88, which is a problem, because if you remember, the generic sine function, the sine function without any phase shifts, without any amplitude adjustments, without any period adjustments, just sine of the angle, has a maximum value of 1. Its range is from negative 1 to 1. And we're getting something that's outside of that range, which means this cannot happen. That is to say, this triangle cannot happen because our values for a and b have the incorrect arrangement. That is, a is too small to properly form a triangle. So this is the case where nothing gets formed. And we'll look at another example where we may have something else that happens. In our second case, we want to solve the triangle ABC for a equals 35 degrees, small a equals 12, and small b equals 16. So we're going to start in the same way that we did before. We need to find sine of b so we can get the value b, which again will be b times sine of a over a. In this case, that's 16 times sine of 35 degrees divided by 15 unitless measurements which here is a legitimate but not very pretty value of 0.7648. So this is actually fine, it's just not very nice. You can get that value from the sine function, it's just, well, not so nice, but we can use an inverse function to get that b is equal to inverse sine of point. 7648, that is, B is approximately 50 degrees. However, this is what we get if we just plug the value into the calculator. The problem is this actually doesn't tell the whole story, because well, we, when we're working the calculator, it likes to give us values in the first quadrant, but sine is also positive in the second quadrant. So there's actually a second value where this will still work in the second quadrant, 50 degrees above the axis. So that is sine can also be equal to 0.7648 at 130 degrees. And as a result, we don't just have the one value that we can get for B, we have two values. And we don't just have the one value for C, which is equal to 180 degrees minus A minus B. C can either be 95 degrees, that is 180 minus 35 minus 50, or 
C could also be 180 minus 35 minus 130 or 15 degrees. It's perfectly valid in either case. And as a result, we have two different triangles that we can work with. They're both equally good as solutions. So if we want to get these solutions, we can proceed using the law of sines pretty directly. That is, we would have B1 and B, B1 and C1 in terms of 50 and 95. Using the law of sines, we would get that small c1 is equal to b times sine of c1 over sine of b1. That is 16 times sine of 95 over sine of 50, or about 20.8. And alternatively, if we take b equals 130 degrees and c equals 15 degrees, we would get that c is still equal to b times sine of c over sine of b, but there that takes the form 16, oh, 16 times sine of 15 degrees over sine of 130 degrees, or approximately 5.4 unitless measurements. That is, we have two different but perfectly valid triangular representations that we can get from this due to the shape and relationship. Whereas in the previous, we only had one, and there are other ways we can do this where we would get a single triangle that is either oblique or right plenty of different options here. And then the last thing we're going to see from this section is how we can use the law of sines in order to be able to compute the area of an oblique triangle, because it's kind of natural to think about that, that we can use this to get something in terms of the height. And if we want to get the area of a triangle, it's just one half base times height. We'll see what that looks like next.